Xiu Ji directly translates to elegant miracle. It actually can be a legit person's name, but I didn't name my cube after someone. It's just named according to the Xiu line, which also has the Xiu Hui 6x6, Xiu Wen 7x7, and Xiu Meng 8x8. Most likely not print those puzzles because 3D printing is expensive, it doesn't match the quality of injection molding, and with a higher piece count, it's going to increase the price even more and possibly also decrease the quality. I simply have the designs and possibly more than one potential design per cube size and the designs that I showed on screen just now are actually not the definitive ones. It's just one of the possible ones. In fact, there is another model contending to use the name of Xiu Qi and that cube is currently my channel banner. It's more like a Xiu Qi duo while this one is Xiu Qi maglev. What they all have in common however are the double center designs. The overall performance on this cube actually reminds me of the Florian Constant Model Shengshou 4x4 version 5. So this cube has a very loose feel, it's super fast, it doesn't have much corner cutting. Same thing, loose feel, super fast. Corner cutting isn't really that much, but you can go about 2 thirds forward and about 1 third reverse, which isn't that bad for a 5x5. And reverse is fairly interesting in the sense where you can at the biggest angle that you can possibly reverse corner cut. It cuts with almost no effort, anything bigger than that. It will get stuck, but there's no in-between where it cuts with a lot of effort. But compared with the Shengshu 4x4 directly, the Xiu Qi has a variety of extra forces that make it prefer the cube shape much more, while the Shengshu 4x4 is a lot more wobbly. And this cube has an extremely sandy feel. The cube itself measures 61mm across, making it smaller than both the Ultron WRM and the Funk. The outer layers, however, are actually bigger than either of those cubes. Since the cube is 3D printed, it runs into quite a lot of problems not commonly found on mass-produced cubes. So the precision of printing isn't that precise, which actually affects the fitting of pieces. So even for the same type of piece, for example, X centers, you can find some that fit a bit better and some that are like just totally loose and rattling in place. And the right combination of imperfect pieces would create like one with frictional drag and the next few rattling in place and it will cause a piece separation problem that looks like one of those on the Yixing Huanglong 17x17 and also possibly the Moi 21x21. Except that now it's happening on a much smaller cube. I must say however, the more this cube is broken in, the more the rough pieces will smoothen out and the, the 3D print associated problems become less of an issue. But I can still quite notice them. The Xiu Qi features a double center design which is the overarching theme of the entire Xiu series. Overall cuts are just inspired by the Mo Yi Hua Chuang. The centers have two levels. The outer one is the same as a regular 5x5. The inner level will lock the corners and the midges into an internal 3x3 and it makes the puzzle a lot more stable, at least in theory. In fact, Moi has not just used double but also triple or even quintuple center designs to build their, a few of their WCA big cubes and practically all of their non-WCA big cubes. The feature I mostly advertise or mention the most about this cube is maglev. So the magnets I use are from an RS3M maglev conversion kit. One person has claimed to have beaten me to making the first maglev 5x5, which I am very willing to believe since I do think this is quite highly possible considering the design of the MGC 5x5. The centerpiece is just a big empty space and I even once considered designing a dual adjustment system to fit inside that space but I never once thought about converting it to maglev which is actually so much easier to do so really credit to this guy. The CUC's maglev system is implemented in a totally different way, capitalizing heavily on the double center design. I made use of the space in between the repelling magnets to make the surrounding pieces have bigger feet ending up in a design that springs cannot achieve. However, one disadvantage is that I have to space the magnets further apart, making it comparable to a maglev RS3M with a compression setting of negative 2, being an estimation by I because I didn't actually measure it. But like this unfortunately makes the cube much less stable than I hoped for. It's like Even though I threw in a lot of stability enhancing features into the design, I do think injection molding can actually get around this problem since the material is stronger, so like they can print thinner than a 3D print, allowing for the magnets to become closer to each other compared to my cube. And also a company like Moi can just like host multiple different magnets in their factory and use stronger magnets compared to what they put in the RS3M so they won't have to be relying on the RS3M conversion kit like me. The Silt C was built over the core of an MF4S. I designed two shelves with embedded magnets and I glued them over the MF4S core these will attract an opposing magnet on the base of the corner. 
core magnets achieve a few things. First, they can attract from a wider distance. So this means that a bigger misalignment can still be put back to the core more easily as opposed to just purely piece magnets. If you overshoot, the cube can also pull itself back to a bigger degree. Secondly, as pointed out by Cubic, varying the distance between core magnets and corner magnets can manipulate how strong the magnetic snap is. And thirdly, there's an extra suction force that pulls the corners inwards towards a preferred position that is defined relative to the core. Because the core magnets are in a fixed position relative to the core and they want to pull the corners as close to them as possible. So flexing the cube out, out of shape like that is unfavorable and there's an increased force trying to drag it back to its cube shape. Combining the second and the third point together, I feel like that's how you can achieve a cube that's really solid and stable, yet it doesn't have this snapping feel. The centerpiece of the Siuqi is stockless within the domain of the internal 3x3 shell, showing off a visible screw. This is the upward inverted center stock, a feature introduced in the Kuokon ESL, and it has basically taken over most of the 3x3 market. This feature also makes an appearance in the MGC 5x5. The upward inverted center stock installs the center stock inside the centerpiece as opposed to being outside, allowing the corners and edges to have larger feet, supposedly increasing the cube's stability. This is also better than completely removing the stock, as it will prevent the centerpiece from wobbling and causing instability. But rather than being hidden inside the centerpiece, the Siuqi's upward inverted center stock is actually the connection point between the 3x3 shell and the 5x5 shell. Comparing the 3x3 shell alone to a Guokuan Ye shell, you will notice that this pillar is actually in the exact same position. Comparing the cube as a whole to the MGC 5x5, the MGC's spring, screw and upward center pillar is outside the main mechanism. And because of this, the cube has to squish the rest of its mechanism underneath the entire spring assembly, leading to a big, linear, straight line extender exterior and a smaller mechanism on the interior. The Siuqi, however, due to how it treats the maglev system like a phantom spring, can afford to have bigger outer cube mechanisms to take up the spring space, it can capitalize fully on the upward inverted center pillar concept without having to shrink it, leading to giant corner bases. This cube features a weight balance design, and this design is actually first suggested by Chris Tran, where you, if you take weights out further away from the center of rotation, it will actually reduce the momentum and like the inertia a bit more compared to removing weight nearer the center. I've actually also implemented this design in the, my 4x4 V2. As for magnets, I have learned my mistake from the 4x4 V2. So with this cube, every single magnet is done in the press fit style, meaning they are touching each other. So even though they are just the same standard strength magnets that most cubes would use, the strength of, the, of each click is ridiculously strong. It is literally V cube 6 worthy. With the 5x5, however, only the wings are built to have this press fit style magnets. The midges and the corners have their magnets inside. So this puts about 1.2 millimeters of distance between both magnets of each pair and the result is a magnet strength that is really quite perfect. So Mac is the real reason why this cube is even made since 3D print quality alone it's not very high. If I really wanted a good 5x5 I would just use my core magnetized Ultron WR but what I can do with 3D design, however, is to test the limit of how many features, like for example those commonly thought to be 3 by 3 only, which I can cram into a bigger cube. And there's so many space constraints holding the big cubes back, and thinking of ways to beat those constraints is really the satisfying part. And this cube just has a whole bunch of features, it easily is one of the coolest puzzles in my entire collection, and it also raises a lot of potential about what mass production can do.